All right, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our Friday celebration of Earth Week. Again, my name is Dominique Dashwood and I work in the Solid Waste Division at the City of Encinitas. Um, so as you all know, we've been doing these daily events throughout the week at noon and this is our last one wrapping up the week. And then our main event, um, so our event today will be with Cleaners for Kids and I'll introduce them in just a moment. And then our main event will be on Saturday. We're gonna have lots of great interviews, music, raffle, contests, um, and you can register for that via Zoom on the city's Facebook page. So today I'm very, very excited to have here with us Clean Earth for Kids. Um, and they're gonna be telling you all about the great environmental action work that the youth has been doing here in the San Diego North County community. Um, so first I wanted to bring on Suzanne and she's going to tell us um, a little bit about what Clean Earth does. Hi everybody, my name is Suzanne Hume and I'm the educational director and founder of cleanearthforkids.org. And we're a nonprofit working hard to protect the environment, children's health. We work for clean air, clean water, non-toxic lands. We work to protect parks and green spaces and try to eliminate toxic air pollution, water pollution, plastics, and other harmful things to the environment. We do this through education and collaboration. We are a multi-generational organization. We have students um, in, you know, from kindergarten and we have consultants and volunteers uh, in their 80s. So uh, we all work together here in North County. We do work in Encinitas and we also are in many other uh, states and have interns at MIT, Georgetown, uh, North Carolina, UCSD, UCLA, Cal State, and so many more. So thank you so much. I started Cleaners for Kids because I was poisoned by pesticides. Um, so it was out of an environmental need. And so um, I was at home and uh, I was a teacher and um, at home and unfortunately, um, pesticides sprayed from a helicopter um, on the crops living near me, um, burnt out my lungs and made me really sick. So I had to move because of doctor's orders. And so we did get the helicopter stopped, but to toxic pesticides are, you know, continue to be used. So we work really hard to get toxic pesticides away from kids at schools, in cities, and also bring awareness that many pesticides that are banned in China, Saudi Arabia, and many countries are being used right here in the United States. And unfortunately, also in California and in our schools. So we'd love everybody um, to work together. And if you have the opportunity to volunteer with us or um, help us in any way, uh, we would absolutely love it. You can contact us through Cleaners for Kids. We have a weekly panel discussion Thursdays at 5.30. And so uh, last night, Diane and Michael, who are with us right now, and they'll get ready to speak in just a second, um, they shared and did a beautiful presentation along with other interns um, and volunteers. And so I'd love to hear from them. So Cheyenne and Michael, if you are ready to share, um, I would like you to uh, introduce yourself. And Cheyenne, if you'd like to get started. Hi, I'm Cheyenne. I work to protect our environment. I would like to tell you about what we do at cleanersforkids.org and invite people to join us. At Cleaners for Kids, we have six teams and racial, social, climate, and environmental justice are foundational to everything we do. Team One Climate Action is about helping cities and school districts and other, others to pass climate plans that use re re renewable energy like solar wind, water, water energy, and green hydrogen. We have our action plan on our front page of our website. The action plan is broken into six main ideas, just like our teams. There are a list of actions you can take that will stop toxic pollution and greenhouse gas gases that are warming our planet. We must stop burning fossil fuels like oil, coal, or natural gas that cause toxic, toxic air and water pollution and greenhouse gases that are warming our planet and causing extreme weather. The city of Encinitas has been an environmental leader. Thank you for taking climate action and actions to stop single-use plastic pollution. We hope the city of Encinitas invests or stops funding fossil fuels we are proud of cleanersforkids.org youth board members who asked Encinitas to devise from fossil fuels. And here's Michael to talk about team two. Team two is protecting parks, public lands, wildlife, and 
plant and trees and garden. Team two has the protect what you love contest and the hashtag picture it contest. You can see pictures of Cheyenne observing nature and taking pictures in the park and at the beach. Protect what you love is a contest to learn how to protect what you love. You can learn about an animal and then write about it. You can learn about the laws that help keep animals safe from harm. The bald eagle is an endangered animal that need protection. Now that the eagle is doing better. And here's Sharon to talk about Protect What You Love content. Hi again. Team two works to protect forests and wildlife, plants, gardens, and trees. You can protect what you love by sending us your picture or drawing of what you love and why you should protect it. Let's work together to protect our forests, national parks, and wildlife, clean water, clean air, oceans, rivers, streams, and our health. You take a picture or draw or write about your favorite animal or place and why you should protect it. We can post it on our social media and website to bring awareness and work to protect nature and our environment. We also have another contest called Picture It, we, where you use post pictures to social media. Picture It is a contest to take pictures of nature. And here's my concern about Team 3. Hello again. Team, team works to protect clean air. Team 3 works to stop sources of air, pollution, car exhaust, is toxic chemicals like benzene and other dangerous chemicals. People can join our no idling sign contest and design a no idling sign. You can draw or use the computer to make a sign. Also, you can check out our Team 3 No Idling Resource Packet with ideas and activities for school. And here's Shan to talk about Team 4. Team 4 is protecting clean water, like streams, rivers, lakes, and our oceans. We work with the Surf Rider Foundation and Coast Keeper and others doing great work. And here's Michael to talk about Team 5. Team 5 works to stop toxic pesticides and chemicals. We are happy that Antonitas has pesticide-free parks. We are working to help other cities get rid of toxic pesticides. People check out our cleanearthforkids.org website for more information. Team six is our reducing plastic pollution and working for zero waste. We know that plastic breaks down into even smaller pieces called microplastics and nanoplastics that harm our water and our animals. We try to bring our own water bottles to get the plastic when we can, and here's Michael. Students of all ages can get community service, credit work, or work toward badges. At cleanearthforkids.org, we welcome students to earn community service by taking notes, creating infographics, art, music, video clips, poetry about you, what you learn. More information is on cleanearthforkids.org and you are welcome to visit our cleanearthforkids.org YouTube channel. And we also welcome college students or adults to fill out an application to intern or volunteer with us. And here is Jan to talk about that, our poetry and dance content. We have also many contests and challenges. If you go to our contest page at cleanearthforkids.org, You'll see a variety of contests like art, music, writing, poetry, dance, STEM projects, infographics, presentations, and more. If you like to write poetry, we have a contest for you. You can check out our cleanupforkids.org and our YouTube channel for more information and videos. Last night on our panel discussion with cleanupforkids.org, we shared information about pollinators. Michael and I can share some information with you. Hey, Anne, can you please tell us about what a pollinator is? A pollinator is an animal that carries pollen, which is the sticky substance that helps plants reproduce from plant to plant. Some examples of pollinators are bees, butterflies, and bats. Thank you, Shan. Now can you tell us about pollen? Pollen is a sticky powder. You may have noticed it on your hands when you pick flowers. Pollen helps plants reproduce and make more plants. Why is pollen important? Without pollination, many species of plants would not be able to reproduce. This is a problem for us because we would depend on most on plants for, mo for countless things. We depend on pollination for food. Over 70% of the top global food crops rely on pollination, especially fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts. That includes things like almonds, apples, and berries. One out of three bites of food is because of pollinators. Pollinators are also essential to our ecosystems and economy. 
Pollinators add about $217 billion to the global economy. In the U.S., honeybees add alone, alone add $1.2 to $5.4 billion. Also, pollination is essential for the production of many medicines. How are flowers, plants, and some trees pollinated? The pollen sticks to the legs and body, and so the pollinator walks or flies and drops pollen and it spreads to plants, flowers, and trees. Can you please tell us about butterflies? There are around 15,000 to 20,000 species of butterfly, and they and they some of the most beautiful animals on the earth. Butterflies feed off nectar and flowers, which makes them great pollinators because they pick up pollen from flower when they feed, which they then spread to other plants. Man, can you please tell us about moths? Moths are insects within the same family as butterflies, but moths outnumber butterflies nine to one. There are about 160 species globally and 11,000 species in the U.S. You can usually tell the difference between moths and butterflies by the shape of their antennae. Butterflies have club-shaped antennae and moths tend to have more feather or thread-like antennae. However, moths are great pollinators just like butterflies because they, they also feed off nectar and pick up pollen, which, spread, which is spread to other plants. Thank you, Shannon. Can you please tell us about the endangered moths and butterflies? Currently in the United States, there are over 330 endangered species of moth and butterflies. Can you please tell us more about butterflies that are endangered? Some of the butterflies that are endangered include the L. sargata blue butterfly, the Sacha swallowtail butterfly, and the iconic monarch butterfly. Thank you, Shan. Can you please tell us about bats? Bats are the only mammals that fly for long periods of time. There are over 1,000 different species of bats and all of them are nocturnal or, they, or active at night. Many live in caves and eat insects and or fruits and vegetables. They are yet another example of important pollinators because they pick up pollen, fruit, or drink nectar from flowers and pass it on to other plants. Cheyenne, can you please tell us about birds? Birds are animals with a backbone, with feathers, a tough beak, and they lay eggs with a hard shell. You, can, you may come in contact with birds every day, but the pictures on the side are, are of honey, hummingbirds. These are the most important birds to serve as important pollinators because they either drink nectar from flowers or eat seeds. What can you tell us about small rodents that carry pollen? These tend to be known as the largest, as the largest pollinators essential to the survival of plant species. But lizards, mice, bats, and other vertebrates also act as important pollinators as well. A new study finds that fruit and seed production drops an average of 63% when animals, but not insects, are kept away. From plants, this means that protecting vertebrates is very important. Dominique, thank you for your work with the city of Encinitas. Why is your work important? Thank you for the question, Cheyenne. Um, so I originally got involved at the work at the city of Encinitas working on the climate action plan. Um, and before that, I was involved in some activism to try to stop further oil and gas extraction. So my main reason for being in this work is to try to slow down and stop greenhouse gas emissions as much as possible so we can preserve our climate and protect our beautiful planet for many years to come. Um, and for younger generations, just like you and me, so they have a beautiful planet to enjoy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that you do in the city of Encinitas. We have some more information. Michael, if you'd like to share a little bit more about trees, um, but before you share, Michael, I just wanna say something. So we have to shout out our partners, NAACP Youth Council, for sure, amazing partners. The NAACP Environmental Commission, Yusuf Miller is the chair, uh, the Surfrider Foundation, all the important work that you're doing is thank you for working with us, Surfrider. Surfrider is currently using um, our materials we offer for free um uh in over 100 schools is what i heard from the surfrider foundation so that's awesome right so anyone that would like to contribute curriculum ideas or join us that would be amazing we also want to make sure we we shout out the sierra club um and thank you so much to the sierra club and important work there food and water watch climate reality i have like a little list here i'll read it for you michael how about that uh let's see san diego climate action network Solana Beach Eco Rotary, which we are in. Thank you. Um, herbicide Free Campus. Let's get all of those pesticides off of campuses. Beyond Pesticides, PAN, which is Pesticide Action Network, North County Climate Change Alliance, um, 
San Diego Building Electrification Committee, Carlsbad Gardens, um, and gardeners everywhere. And you guys, I'm excited for Marlo to share tomorrow um, when you guys watch EcoFest. Uh, from it's from 11 to 1 tomorrow so that will be amazing and of course mothers out front mom's air clean for clean air force um, we'd like to give a shout out to Vista Unified School District um, specifically board members um, Cipriano Vargas and Martha Alvarado and more all of them actually have been amazing we're so excited about that and a shout out to Stacy Dr. Stacy began in Oceanside Unified District shout out to Encinitas Unified because of all the important their work that they're doing there with the farm lab and so many others. So we don't have time to shout everyone out, but Michael, can you please uh, tell us more about trees? Did you know there are about a thousand tree species in North America? That sounds like a lot, but there are between 40,000 to 50,000 species of trees in the world. The Tree City USA program has been helping add trees to places around America since 1976. That's great, Michael. How many places are in the program? More than 3,400 towns and cities have made the commitment to becoming a tree city USA. Michael, how many are in California? There are 146 tree USA communities in California and 50% of the Californians live in a tree city or town. That's great. How many trees were planted in those communities? Over 130,000 trees were planted in those 146 towns and cities. Do we live in a tree city? Yeah, we don't. Here in North County, San Diego, only Carlsbad and Encinitas are tree cities. It would be great if Oceanside, Vista, San Marcos, and Escondido were tree cities too. How can we become a tree city? It's not that high. Towns or cities just need four things before they apply. One, a tree board or department. Two, a tree care ordinance. Three, minimum foster annual budget of two per resident. Four, every day of servants and proclamation every year. That doesn't sound very hard. Is there anyone to help? Yes, there is. A great place to start is to contact the urban and community foster coordinator in San Diego and is Lynette Short. That is Lynette Short. Is there anyone else? Yes, there is. There are four groups in here, California, that you can work with. There is more information on cleanupforkids.org. Also, the Call It Out Challenge is an opportunity to call out injustice. So first, I'd like to quote Martin Luther King Jr. as he states, injustice is everywhere. It is a threat to justice everywhere. We must protect people and communities for toxic air and water pollution and stop toxic chemicals and pesticides from being allowed near our workers, children at school and at home, our seniors and all of us. I'd like to talk about our Today Is Calendar Contest. This contest is a way to show your art, music, videos, research reports, and many more. So you, so you could teach us about what important things happened to the, on that day. We are excited to hear from you. These are the hands. Contest is open to everyone of all ages. We hope you will join us in making a drawing and decorating a hand to recognize, honor, and lift up people working for change and to make life better for others. Everyone is encouraged to participate and honor someone making a positive difference in your school, community, city, state, or even in our world. You can draw and decorate a picture of a hand and add, add symbols, words, and pictures to honor their work. We all need clean air to breathe. Congratulations to Alicia, who won the Smoking is Not Copying contest. You can see her video clip on Team 3, Smoking Hurts Lungs. Please join us. Dominique, thank you for your work in the city of Encinitas. Why is this working to protect the environment? Yeah, um, thank you for the question. Um, so yeah, another reason why I think this work is so important is that we we all have our small part to play to make the environment a little bit better. It's super easy just to maybe start riding your bike or stop using pesticides. Um, there's a lot of different ways and if we all participate, it's gonna make the world that much better. Thank you. Could I ask a question of Cheyenne and Michael too? So Cheyenne and Michael, I was curious, um, why is this work so important to you to protect our environment? Um, I think it's important to protect our environment so everybody on earth can have clean air and so could animals so like they can live 
um, nice and ha can have a uh, live good, and that um, other people can um, have clean air to breathe and good and clean water to drink. And I think that um, that well, our work is important because we should all have clean air and clean water, and people to come will have clean air and clean water that we can be safe and have enjoy our time outside and have um have fun. So yeah. Yeah, great answers. I mean, we all deserve clean air, clean water. It's it's a human right, and also not just for the humans, but for all the plants and animals that make up our planet as well. So thank you both so much. You're welcome. So please join us on our panel discussions every Thursday at 5.30, and we'd love to join you to learn about um, the earth and the clean water. Clean air. Great, and people can go on and watch your, the rest of your stuff about the bees. Go ahead. And we'd also like to take, give a shout out to NAACP Youth Council. Yes, and Miss Debbie and everybody there working on really hard. We love our partners and the people that we mentioned earlier and others, everybody working together. So back to you, Dominique. Thank you so much for this opportunity for us to share. Of course, you're welcome, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Michael, Cheyenne, and Suzanne for all taking the time to come on as part of the City Events Meetus EcoFest Earth Day celebration. Um, I'm so inspired by all the work that you're doing. You seem so busy and such a great effort throughout the community, so many groups involved. Um, it's really, really inspiring for me to see the youth taking action in this way. Um, and you're both so intelligent. I know you're gonna go great places in the future. Um, so I'll close this out for our Earth Week celebration. Um, we're so excited to see you all back here tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.